arthropods. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, this paper. So if you're on the uh, website, it's called a paleontological solution to dot PDF. And when you click that, it's going to open up a little thing like this, which is uh, kind of neat. So this was in nature. This is uh, some pretty good science. Uh, they've filled in a couple more of the gaps from this paper uh, since then. But I think in general, uh, what they're saying here stacks up. So I will come back and explain what's going on here. First, let's jump to the PowerPoint. Okay. So for actually, so for this one, first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into the arthropod section and you're going to watch the Omnicophora. And then you're going to watch the Tardigrada. So those two little videos. Onychophores are called velvet worms, and uh, I think our velvet worm one is uh, from an Attenborough documentary. And the uh, tardy, either that or it's a National Geographic, I don't remember. And the tardigrades, these are the things called water bears. These are both not arthropods, but they're in the Panarthropoda, which is this group that includes the arthropods and a couple other groups like these. So they're also ecdysozoan in the sense that they're going to shed their outer... Uh, um, coating in order to grow larger and they'll do that several times throughout life and yeah just take a look at them now the way these relate to other arthropods is that <clears throat> they're all made with segments and you can't see the segments quite as well because they don't have a really firm line between them this is one of those onychophorans uh, up here at the top so one of those velvet worms, and uh, yeah, you can see it's little siphons that it shoots that glue out of to stick things down. And then you can see the little uh, sort of mouth parts right in here, and the uh, jaws, and the legs start right down here. And um, it's also got these SP, maybe that's the siphons. Oh yeah, AT is antennas, SP is siphons. Okay, and so if you look at it, and you look at the way that they develop, um, so this is a little embryo over here. <coughs> and it's developing and it's got little primitive segments in it so the segment lines get a little bit blurred in the adult but the segments are there as it's growing up and so that's the key to understanding these things and how they're related uh, we think velvet worms look pretty similar to a very early branch of the um, uh, group that leads to arthropods and so they're just one of the last survivors of these very strange looking creatures and so there we've got our antenna on the top. Um, the eyes are going to be in here. And they have quite simple eyes. They can just barely see light and darkness, if I remember right. Whereas other kinds of arthropods are going to have those complex um, eyes that contain a lot of little tiny eyes. They have lots of little, little lenses. And together they form a nice big picture of the world and give really good uh, vision. Um, and so the first segment on uh, the uh, past is going to contain the basically the brain and the eyes and the antenna will be coming out from it. Second segment is going to contain the jaw. Third segment is going to contain the siphon. And then the fourth and fifth segment are going to contain the legs. And we think this is pretty primitive and we think this is how these creatures started out. And so the uh, paper that I brought up online, here we go, there's our little nature paper, will actually take you through this you can actually go back in the fossil record and you can watch arthropods start to develop these features. And so the way it looks is that the very most primitive ones start out really simple. They basically just have the body and the legs and we're going to start modifying individual legs and turning them into different things uh, on different arthropods. And so uh, you got Aishea up here at the top and it's going to have sort of a modified appendage up here and this is the first appendage that's kind of different from the legs that follow uh, everything else would just have legs and a mouth but uh, arthropods are kind of famous for having these really interesting multi-part mouths they've got several different layers of things like little paddles and pincers to uh, put food in their mouths and so if you're looking at the very uh, primitive branches on the tree, uh, everything that's over here, you see that they each just have one modified leg at the front. And so sometimes it's a little grasping leg for holding on to food and presumably passing it into the mouth. Sometimes we're not really sure what you could do with a leg like that. 
Um, and then you get down here to this group, and once you're in this group, then they have that original leg, but they've also started to modify and diversify. They've got something like antenna growing on the front. And so the antenna are coming out of the first segment, and this leg is coming out of the second segment. And on each of these, they're only showing you the head. They've dissolved away the rest of the body, because uh, don't pay attention to that. And so we've got a variety of things with eyes either embedded in the head or up on little stalks, and the one sort of feeding appendage and the little antenna-like appendage down here. Okay, and so that's true of everybody in this group except the most primitive member. Actually, no, even the most primitive member. There they are, a little uh, antenna right on the inside. So yeah, so that's where you can see that, uh, that path uh, being taken. And then that seems to be a sister group with everything that we know of as modern um, arthropods. So chelicerates are going to be things with these modified mouth parts called chelicera, which would look a bit like that. They're going to be something like fangs in the front, uh, think something like a spider or a tick, something that can uh, bite you. Um, and uh, over in this group, the mandibulata, these are going to be things like insects and uh, crustaceans, things like crabs. Um, and if you're a fan of fossils, uh, this is the front end of a trilobite, and they've got the eyes there, they've definitely got the antenna, and tucked in underneath, they actually do have uh, little mouth parts, kind of like this, but then they take that a little further, and the simplest ones just seem to have maybe one or two mouth parts. And the more complicated ones start adding mouth parts behind as they are basically modifying one segment after another. So the simplest way to make an arthropod is you just have you know, a tube with uh, legs on it if you want and uh, some kind of food hole in the front. And then arthropods will specialize on this and they'll basically style on this idea as they uh, yeah, keep modifying their little mouth parts and that's what uh, makes them different. That's an easy way to tell them apart. So as we go through um, more modern uh, ones, onychophorans resemble the, um, uh, the more primitive uh, end, but you see they've got the, the modified first uh, segment, or second segment rather, is a jaw, that's fine, and the modified third segment is going to be that siphon, uh, is gonna come from that embryologically. So it seems like it's, let's see, there's our first segment, second segment is gonna contain the jaw, and then embryologically, these guys actually come from the segment behind where the jaw uh, comes from. And then it's all legs on the way back. Um, so they're somewhat specialized, like more specialized than those primitive things. And then chelicerates are going to have those chelicera up front, which remember are like spider, uh, spider fangs. <clears throat> and then they will have a thing called a pedipalp, which is like a little paddle for pushing food into your mouth. And um, uh, yeah, if you've seen the picture of the face of a spider, you'll, you'll see those petty palps there. They're, they're pretty cool looking. And then after that, you got legs and legs. Uh, yeah, um, different number of sets on different arthropods. Um, crustaceans are gonna be things like crabs and lobsters and a whole bunch of other stuff that we will cover. These are actually highly modified. And so they're gonna have um, the head up here, so the eye is actually going to come out of the first segment. You see the eye is always coming out of the first segment, and the brain is always in the first segment. That's just how they operate. And then instead of that modified uh, chelicera coming from there, they're actually going to modify their first uh, set of legs to make an antenna, and they're going to modify their second set of legs to make a different kind of antenna. So now they can pick up different signals. And then instead of modifying that first set up here, uh, like in the onychophore and chelicerata, they're gonna have these mandibles and maxillas, which are both going to be mouth parts. <clears throat> and so this is more for uh, piercing and cutting uh, the mandible, and the maxilla is gonna be more for just pushing things, uh, making sure you get them all into the mouth. Uh, and in hexapods, which are insects, the hexa means six, and so they have six legs, and myriapods, which are um, uh, things like a uh, centipede. There we go, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> They're only gonna have one set of antenna. They're gonna come from the modified first set of legs. They're gonna have nothing coming off the next segment. That's kind of cool. So they uh, maybe started out like a crustacean and lost the uh, genes that were encoding for that second set of antenna there, or they didn't need it, I guess. And then, uh, yeah, very similar uh, otherwise, uh, mandible and uh, maxilla. So there you go.
And uh, so this is showing a reconstruction of what we think a very early arthropod would have done. So remember those Hox genes, H-O-X. These are some of the things that control where different body parts end up during development. Like you'll express a Hox gene in a limb bud, and then you will start growing arms or legs out of that limb bud. Anyway, uh, it turns out that, uh, yeah, we've got a pretty good idea of where the different Hox genes are expressed in different kinds of animals. So in an insect or a centipede, uh, they go from pretty much front to back in the order in which they appear on the genome. So Hox 1 is going to be expressed up here in the uh, front end, Hox 2 uh, or 3 in the next segment, and so on until we get all the way to the end where you'll have Hox 8 uh, slash 9 or Hox 10. And this may be 8 and 9, or it may depend on the different... Uh, uh, it may depend on which kind of uh, organism you've got. Um, and so insects have 10, but everything else only goes up to 9. And so I th and uh, in some of these cases, they just don't know much about the expression of Hox 1 through 6. But uh, they're, they're kind of assuming that uh, they must have been there in the last common ancestor because they're there in all of the modern versions that we have. So at some point they must have got into the family tree because everybody is basically doing this thing. And then um, they can actually go back and do a reasonable reconstruction of what the Hox genes of an extinct trilobite might have looked like. So that's kind of cool, yeah. And so they're reconstructing it as being uh, pretty much the same thing. Um, so the things that always code for the tail would probably code for the tail of the trilobite. The things that always code for segments, this is the seven, eight, nine, like the segments with legs, are probably going to encode the same part in the trilobite, as you imagine. And the things that code for antenna and mouth parts are almost certainly going to be, uh, yeah, the same genes as you find in everything else. So that's the idea. So that's a little look at Hox genes and a little look at arthropod and pan-arthropod evolution.